in India, there are some important responsibilities that every citizen is encouraged to follow. These are known as fundamental duties. These duties are like a set of rules that every citizen should follow to help make our country better. Let's explore these fundamental duties which serve as a reminder for each one of us to contribute to the well-being of our nation. Hello everyone, my name is Priya and I welcome you all back to my channel Picto Learning. I hope you all are doing great. In the last video, we discussed short trick to learn all the articles of DPSP. Till now, we have covered all the articles from part 1 to part 4 of the Indian Constitution in detail. Now moving ahead from today, we will start the series of the next part of the Indian Constitution, that is part 4a, which talks about fundamental duties. Part 4a contains only one article and that is Article 51a. When our constitution was written, there was no chapter named Fundamental Duties. That means the original constitution contained only the fundamental rights and not the fundamental duties. The concept of fundamental duties in the Indian constitution was taken from the constitution of USSR. During the period of the 1970s, the Indian government began to feel the absence of fundamental duties in the constitution, particularly during the time of the emergency, declared by Prime Minister Indira Gandhi in the year 1975, the emergency which lasted from 1975 to 1977. In the year 1976, the Congress party established a committee called Swaran Singh Committee. The chairman of this committee was Sardar Swaran Singh. This committee was set up to make recommendations about the fundamental duties. When Swaran Singh Committee submitted its report, it recommended eight fundamental duties. Number 1. Respect for the Constitution, National Flag and National Anthem. Number 2. Preserve democratic principles and traditions of the country. Number 3. Respect and honor for the ideals of the freedom struggle. Number 4. Promote unity and integrity of the nation. Number 5. Defending and safeguarding the country when called upon. Number 6. Spirit of common brotherhood amongst all the people of India. Number 7. Preservation of the rich heritage composite culture of country. And number 8. Protection and improvement of natural environment. Apart from these recommendations, there were some recommendations which the Congress party did not accept, maybe due to lack of feasibility or practicality. Let's see what those recommendations were. The committee had said that Parliament should make provision for some penalty or punishment if any person does not accept or refuses to do any of the duties. The committee had also recommended that no law will be questioned in any court which passes punishment or penalty for violation of any of the fundamental rights or any other provision of the constitution. Remember one thing, that this committee, that is Swaran Singh committee, was not formed only for fundamental duties. This committee was formed to review the working of the entire constitution. That is why this committee also gave its recommendation regarding fundamental rights. Another recommendation which was rejected was that paying tax should also be made a fundamental duty. So these were the recommendations of Swaran Singh committee which were rejected. So, after analyzing all the recommendations, the Congress government at center passed the 42nd Constitutional Amendment Act in the year 1976. This amendment added a new part that is part 4a to the Indian Constitution. This part contained only one article and that is article 51a, in which total 10 fundamental duties were inserted. Initially, 10 fundamental duties were added to the list, but in the year 2002, when 86th Constitutional Amendment Act was passed, one more duty was added to the list. We will discuss each one of the duties in detail in the next video. Before that, let us understand why it was necessary to make these fundamental duties a part of the Indian Constitution. So here are the reasons. Number 1. To promote citizenship awareness. That means, fundamental duties help citizens understand their responsibilities towards the nation and its values. It creates awareness about the importance of being a responsible citizen. Number two, to balance between rights and responsibilities. Means, citizens while enjoying their rights, they should also be aware of duties they owe to their country. 
Number three, to promote national unity means encouraging people to work together and get along peacefully despite their differences like religion, language or where they come from. It's about making sure that everyone feels like they're part of the same country and working towards common goals. Number four, to encourage civic responsibilities. These duties encourage citizens to actively participate in nation-building activities such as community services, environmental protection, etc. And number five, to support in emergency situations means being ready to help out during difficult times like natural disasters, accidents or other crises. It involves being prepared to lend a hand to those in need. So these were some important points you should know while studying about fundamental duties. Now let's see some key differences between the fundamental rights and the fundamental duties. Number 1. Fundamental rights are present in part 3 of the Indian constitution, whereas fundamental duties are present in part 4a of the Indian constitution. Number 2. Article 12 to 35 deals with fundamental rights, whereas Article 51a, that is only one article, deal with fundamental duties. Number 3. The concept of fundamental rights is borrowed from the Constitution of USA, whereas the concept of fundamental duties is borrowed from the Constitution of former Soviet Union, that is USSR. Number 4. There are total of 6 fundamental rights in the Indian Constitution, whereas the total number of fundamental duties are 11. Number 5. Some of the fundamental rights are applicable to both citizens and non-citizens, whereas fundamental duties are confined to Indian citizens only. Number 6. Fundamental rights are aimed at protecting liberties and freedoms of citizens, irrespective of their religion, caste, creed, race, gender, place of birth, etc. Whereas fundamental duties are aimed at protecting a sense of discipline and responsibility among citizens. Number 7. Examples of fundamental rights are right to equality, right to freedom, right to education, etc. Whereas examples of fundamental duties are duty to safeguard public property, duty to protect natural environment, duty to uphold sovereignty and integrity of India. Number 8. Fundamental rights are justiciable. That means they are enforceable in a court of law, whereas fundamental duties are non-justiciable. That means they are not enforceable in a court of law. Number 9. Fundamental rights can be suspended during a state of emergency, except Article 20 and 21, whereas fundamental duties remain operative at all times. And number 10, originally seven fundamental rights were provided, but now there are six fundamental rights after the right to property was removed. Whereas 10 fundamental duties were provided originally, but after 86th Amendment Act of 2002, one more duty has been added to the list. So these were the key differences between the fundamental rights and the fundamental duties. I hope you have learned a lot from today's video. In the next video, we will discuss all the fundamental duties in detail. Till then, take care and thank you so much for watching and supporting Pictou Learning.